Hey guys, so the recent Raisha Khan saga where she lied in parliament has been sweeping Singapore by storm and it is the gift that just keeps on giving because it has been going on for weeks and weeks and weeks and many of you guys have asked me to do a summary or to give my opinion on what happened so here I am! It is quite well known that I'm a PAP supporter and I have made it very clear from the start that I don't like Raisha Khan so maybe in this video I may sound a little bit biased however I will try to be more objective and base my judgement on facts. And if you guys disagree with me, please feel free to leave a comment. I think it's always good to have more discourse. So this video will be split into three parts. The first part will be a summary of the timeline so that you don't have to spend half your life watching like 30 hours of hearings. Second part will be how Workers' Party handled this whole crisis very well from a PR point of view. And the third part will be my analysis on who's telling the truth and who's lying. I think a lot of Singaporeans feel a little bit burnt out from this whole thing. They think that it is all about Raisha Khan's lying and it has already been confirmed that she's lying, right? So why is there a need for so many hearings that are just ongoing. What these hearings are trying to do is to determine whether the worker party leaders, uh, meaning Pritam Sylvia and Faisal Manak, they were either one of three things, okay? Number one, they were actively encouraging Raisha Khan to continue the lie and not to confess the lie, basically just let it go on. Or option number two, they simply did nothing. Okay, and didn't do anything about the lie. Or option number three, they actually took active steps to correct the lie. And after these hearings, then if the conclusion is that they actually actively wanted her to continue the lie, then these party members might be stripped of their parliamentary uh, privileges and after they are stripped, they might even be charged. So it is quite serious. Alright guys, so now we go into the timeline and this is a timeline of what happened on what date and who said what. Um, to the best of my ability, I tried to make the timeline accurate uh, but maybe there are still some errors so if there's anything that is wrong, just feel free to leave a comment and let me know and I'll put a note in the video, okay? So let's get started. On August 2nd, Raisha Khan handed in her script for what she was going to say in parliament the next day and in this script, she included uh, the anecdote the famous anecdote which she lied about, okay? And typically, WP members will hand in their scripts to a portal, um, typically about a week in advance, so that other members can see what they're going to say in Parliament and give their opinions, okay? So, uh, on the script, uh, Pritam Singh then left a note on the anecdote and he said, substantiate, question mark, that was the only thing that he said. And Raisha Khan, I guess, chose to ignore what he said, okay? So, now we go to August 3rd, which is the next day. So on August 3rd, Raisha Khan then delivers her speech which includes the famous anecdote where she was lying and in case you are living in a cave, just to keep the story very very short here, she claimed that she accompanied a sexual assault victim to the police station uh, in Singapore Okay, and then the policeman questioned the victim on her dressing and her drinking and this made the victim feel very very uncomfortable and Raisha Khan um, didn't feel that what the policeman did was right and she used this anecdote to support the fact that she thinks that policemen should have more sensitivity training when it comes to dealing with sexual assault victims on August 7, after a few days of uh, Pritam sort of hounding Raisha on details of the anecdote that she told, she finally decided to confess to Pritam that she has told a lie. Now we move on to August 8. So after realising that Raisha has told a lie in Parliament, Pritam then decided to call for a meeting. And this meeting was at Pritam Singh's house together with other party leaders, uh, Sylvia Lim, Raisa Manap, Pritam Singh and Raisha Khan. So during Raisha's first COP hearing, she says that her takeaway after that meeting was that if the lie was not exposed, there will be no need to clarify it. According to her first testimony, she said that she was looking for guidance on what to do. She said that she didn't know what she should do, whether she should confess or continue not clarifying the lie and went to them for advice because they are more seasoned politicians. After the meeting, she then texted Miss Lo and Nathan and told them that the party leaders wanted her to take the information to the grave. According to Pritam Singh's version of what happened during this meeting, he said that the party leaders didn't give Raisha Khan any advice on whether she should clarify the lie or not because she was crying the entire time, she seemed like she was very distraught, so they were very concerned for her mental well-being and everyone was just very shocked by the news of her sexual assault. They simply told her that she should inform her parents about the sexual assault. When Erin Tong asked Pritam Singh why he thinks that Raisha would tell Miss Lo and Nathan that the party leaders told her to take the information to the grave, 
He said that she had told him that she suffers from dissociation and that she should actually get her mental health checked out. And I think he's just using a very like proper way to say, how the fuck I know what she likes, she's still lah. After Pritam COP hearing, Raisha had a second COP hearing as well where she responded to what he said. Raisha is very firm that she has heard the exact words take it to the grave. And this phrase was uttered by Pritam Singh in front of both Faisal Manak and Sylvia Lim. She also added that those are not words that she typically would use and therefore she was quoting him verbatim. Raisha also added that Pritam's initial reaction was that he was to take her to the Committee of Privileges since she told a lie in Parliament. However, that position changed after discussion. And she also added, interestingly enough, that during this August 8th meeting, there was actually no discussion on whether she should tell her parents or not. Okay, now we go to September 13 and it has been a month since the Workers' Party's leaders knew about the lie. And this was when Raisha Khan was supposed to go to another parliamentary hearing. However, she got shingles. I shouldn't be laughing about that, okay. Um, shingles are very painful and very serious, okay. Leading up to this parliamentary session, there was no follow-up uh, by the Worker Party leaders on whether she should come clean or not and they did not ask her whether she has told her family about her sexual assault experience. Now we come to October 3rd and it has been two months since the lie was uttered in parliament. So in preparation for Raisha going to a parliamentary session the next day, Pritam had a meeting in private with Raisha Khan alone and this is where the famous I will not judge you phrase comes into contention. According to Pritam, what he told Raisha was that she needed to take ownership and responsibility for her lie and he also added that I will not judge you, meaning I will not judge you if you tell the truth in parliament or rather confess the lie. He also added that Raisha was a little bit uncomfortable when he told her that. During her first COP hearing, Raisha said that when Pritam said the words, I will not judge you, she took it to mean that he would not judge her if she were to continue on her current narrative, which is to not clarify that it was a lie. During her second COP hearing, Raisha added that Pritam told her that he might have a feeling that the issue is going to arise the next day during her next parliamentary session. She added that there was no directive from Pritam for her to clarify her lie and he definitely did not ever tell her to take ownership and responsibility for her life. She also added that she didn't feel uncomfortable. From October 3rd to October 4th, which was the next parliamentary session, um, the Worker Party leaders did nothing to prepare for Raisha to confess her lie and they didn't help her prepare a speech, they didn't help her draft anything and so she went on the next parliamentary session, just like that. Edwin Tong asked Pritam Singh why didn't he prep Raisha Khan if he thought that she was going to confess her lie on October 4th. Pritam's reply was that he didn't know if the issue was going to arise. Now we come to the very exciting October 4th, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen videos of. So this is when Raisha Khan doubles down on her lie after she was being grilled by uh, Mr. Shamugam and he was really coming down hard on her, okay? So she repeats, confirm this thing happened, okay? And I did not lie. So during the exchange, Raisha also texted Pritam Singh and she asked, what should I do Pritam? and there was no reply from him so I guess she was checking her phone, no reply and he only replied afterwards, we'll speak after sitting, keep chair and I posted. So same day on October 4th at about 11pm after the parliamentary session, they held an emergency meeting and this meeting had Pritam Singh, Sylvia Lim and Raisha Khan present. According to Pritam Singh, Raisha said, Perhaps there's another way which is to tell the truth and Raisha agreed that she did say this sentence. According to Pritam, his reply was, but look at the choice you made. His takeaway from that meeting was that Raisha was finally ready to own up and he said he felt very relieved. So there was a next parliamentary session on October 5th which is one day after Raisha doubled down on her lie and Edwin Tong asked Pritam Singh why didn't he prepare her to tell the truth the very next day um, since they kind of had an agreement to tell the truth. So Pritam's reply was that he wasn't sure whether she has told her parents yet. And he didn't ask. Now we come to Sylvia Lim's version. According to her, Pritam Singh had asked Raisha what she was planning to do. And when asked why they didn't prepare her to confess on October 5th, her reply was that they had a lot on their plate. Um, something to do with Fika. 
Don't know what speaker. In Raisha's version of what happened during the October 4th meeting, she said that they had simply discussed what were the next steps to make. And she also added that when Pritam Singh told her, look at the choice you made, she was actually really shocked because she felt that it was his directive from the start that she was not to clarify her lie. On October 7, just as Minister Shamugan promised he was not going to let the matter go, so the police emailed Raisha to come down for a talk. I think there were like three times that the police emailed her and she kind of ignored all of them. According to Raisha, both Pritam and Sylvia had told her that she should just ignore the police because they cannot force an MP to go to a police investigation as during parliamentary sessions you have parliamentary rights. According to Pritam, he said he has neither directed uh, Raisha to answer or not answer the police and he claims he also told Raisha to tell the police that she was planning to confess soon. According to Sylvia Lim, she told Raisha that the proper place to confess would be during parliamentary sessions and she also said that it would be okay to leave it, meaning kind of ignore the police uh, because she was going to confess anyway. Okay, so now we've come to October 12th, there was another meeting between Pritam, Raisha and Sylvia Lim and according to Raisha, during this meeting, the party leaders and herself have discussed and they decided that there was no choice now uh, but to come clean. They also told her that there will be no disciplinary action that will be taken against her. According to Pritam, Raisha was still initially unwilling to tell the truth and he finally managed to convince her that she should. According to Sylvia Lim, both Pritam and herself were very very upset and angry with Raisha because she initially didn't want to come clean and when Pritam asked her what she planned to do next, she said, I still don't think I want to tell the truth. However, according to Raisha, she was never unwilling to come clean from the start since August 7 when she confessed to Pritam and this whole time she has been just looking to the party leaders for direction on what she should do. On October 12, Pritam Singh met with both Miss Lo and Nathan. According to the two of them, when Pritam said, I would not judge you, they interpreted it as being able to go either way. But Pritam thinks that he was very clear that I will not judge you means he thinks that Raisha should confess her lie. When Edwin Tong asked Pritam Singh, if you were very clear, then why would the two of them be unclear about what your directive is? He said that the two of them are very protective of Raisha and therefore they could have been lying. Now we come to October 29, this is when Raisha prepares a speech to confess and Pritam read through the speech and also helped her to edit some parts of it. November 1st, this is when Raisha Khan confesses in a parliamentary session that she has told a lie. On the same day, Pritam Singh puts up a Facebook statement and in this statement, he does not disclose that the party leaders knew about the lie since months ago. When asked why he did not disclose this information, he said it's not relevant or important for the public to know about it. On November 2nd, the next day, WP puts up a media statement about a disciplinary panel that was formed for Raisha Khan. And when Edwin Tong asked, in this statement, why do you not disclose that the party leaders knew about the lie since August, he also said, repeated the same thing, it is not relevant for the public to know. According to Raisha, she was very shocked that there was a disciplinary panel that was formed for her because she was told that there was not going to be. On October 29, there was a disciplinary panel interview with Raisha and interestingly enough, this panel consisted of the three people who knew about the lie since August. That would be Pritam, Sylvia and Faisal Manak. During this disciplinary panel interview, neither the public nor WP members knew that these three party leaders were privy to the lie since August. When Edwin Tong asked Pritam whether he thinks that there was a conflict of interest since the three party leaders were kind of you know, involved in the lie that went on for a little bit too long, uh, Pritam thinks that he did not think that there was any issue. November 30th, Raisha hands in her resignation letter and resigns from WP. On the same day that Raisha Khan resigns, the CEC voted on the disciplinary panel's findings. So if you're confused what the CEC is, it's a group of WP members and they are to look at the findings about what the disciplinary panel has sort of discovered from their interview with Raisha and then they will decide what to do with Raisha, okay? And because they have not yet received her vaccination letter, it was sent on the same day, they then all voted overwhelmingly to expel Raisha if she does not choose to resign on her own accord. Now we come to December 2nd and Workers' Party held a press conference. So this is the first time that the public knew that the three Worker Party leaders were privy to Raisha's lies a few days after she told the lie. And it's interesting to know that this press conference was held about the same time as the first COP hearing of Ms. Lo. And when Edwin Tong asked Pritam Singh 
Is it because you knew that during the COP hearings, it would come out that you three knew about the lie so early? Pritam said, no, it is just a coincidence. Okay, so that's my recap of the timeline of what has happened and I hope it made things clearer for you guys. Now we've come to part two and I just want to talk about you know how from a PR perspective I think Workers' Party did really well uh, on controlling the media narrative and this was actually quite a terrible crisis for them but they kind of managed to change it into something that is you know salvageable. I guess this part is not really relevant but I find it still very interesting because I myself work in the media industry and public image is very much involved. Okay so let's look at how they did it. Number one the hearings for Pritam Singh went on for about nine hours okay and this is like a really really long time but I feel like you know during the times where he was built by Edwin Tong right there were a lot of instances where he was very needlessly arguing on certain things. If you ask him like, have you eaten today? He will just be like, what do you mean by eaten? Is it the consumption of food? Are you referring to water as well? And what do you mean by today? Is it lunch, dinner, breakfast? Like just fucking answer the question lah. You know, like everything that Edwinton asks him, he just go round and round and round. And the end result is right, like nobody wants to view nine hours of footage. It is just like, oh my God, there's so much shit going on. So I think that that is great for Workers' Party because the less people know, the easier it is for them to kind of like not form an opinion so much, I guess. Yeah, so that's a good move. Also, the end result is that many netizens have remarked that uh, Pritam was grilled for nine hours, like kind of on the stand, you know. So they feel like he was being bullied, like, by being like asked to stay there for so long ah. mm, but I really feel well it's cause him himself keep talking in circles that's why I don't mm. So during the hearings, Pritam Singh actually performed very well and I think many Singaporeans agree on this. He kept the exchanges between him and Edwin Tong very very dramatic, right? So instead of focusing on how culpable the WP leaders are, people are instead like watching the drama between these two like sparring lawyers and seeing like, you know, who actually came off the fight on top. And he also repeated several times that he is the leader of the opposition. <laughs> and I think that this gives Singaporeans like more faith that he is fit to lead. Point number three, we also noticed that during the first COP hearings, Pritam is wearing a red tie. So some people online, including myself, have commented that he sounded defensive, a little bit too aggressive. When he was called back to do a second hearing, this time round, we see him wearing a blue tie and he was a lot more nice, a lot more calm, and I would say even almost docile. This could have been to make himself seem a bit more cooperative after the feedback from the first hearing. Point number four, there was a press conference held, and during this press conference, Singaporeans for the first time knew that the Worker Party leaders uh, knew about the lie since August 7th. And it's not until December 2nd when the public knew about it, so this is months and months and months later. This press conference was time to be exactly during Ms. Lo's COP hearings and Ms. Lo's COP hearings was the first of the COP hearings, okay? And actually during her hearing, uh, Edwin Tong had to say, you know, hot off the press, uh, Locust Party just came up with a media conference and this is what they said. Ms. Lo, I'm looking at this literally as I speak with you. Yeah. But there are several points which cut across what we have been discussing earlier and yeah. I'd like to get your clarification on it. And this is based on the media reports. That's when she famously cried. Even though Pritam Singh told Edwin Tong it is just a coincidence, where I don't think it's a coincidence, you know, how can it be lah? So I think that they were really smart because they knew that during the COP hearings, Miss Lo is going to expose them and say, ah, you see ah, these people ah, they know about life since so long ago ah. So, they just come out and say first ah, like you know yes we knew about our lives in so ago and because they say it first they can then choose to control the narrative the way that they want number five when edwin tong asked pritam singh why he thinks that raisha khan would lie to miss lo and nathan and tell the two of them that he said that she should take the information to the grave he actually replied right by saying that you know she has like dissociation and that she should have mental health checked out right so we mentioned this before and i think that it is a clever move even though it's not very well perceived by the public like some people think it's not a nice thing to say about somebody's mental health still it gives this impression right that 
Raisha kind of like sell ding dong like that. Like you cannot really trust what she's saying. Ah, like this woman like crazy anytime can lie. And it has already been proven that she did lie, right? She did lie twice. She lied once uh, when she first said the anecdote and then she lied again on October 4th. So who knows what this Xiao person is lying about again? It's a little bit mean. I guess because until Pritam mentioned that Raisha Khan has dissociation, actually nobody knew about it. Now we come to point number six. So I think, and okay, this is just in my own imagination, right? Like before the COP hearings, I think the party leaders, the three party leaders, uh, Sylvia, Pritam, and Faisal Manak, they probably like thought a lot about how they are going to handle the COP hearings because it's going to be viewed by a lot of Singaporeans, right? So I think that they came up with roles that were assigned to all three of them. Pritam was seen as like the leader, he is a lot more dominant, he's the one who answers most of the questions. The other two leaders, right, are more soft-spoken, I guess, more neutral. And a lot of times they said that they weren't privy to a lot of information, they cannot remember or they were not present. So I think they left uh, Pritam to be the figure of authority and to do most of the talking so that they can maintain, you know, like some level of consistency and having only one person say things will actually reduce the risk of having contradictions in all of their testimony. I think it's important to have all of these roles because if you have all three leaders who don't really know what's going on, they are all very neutral, well, it would seem like the party is very inept. And if you have all three leaders very assertive and very dominant, right, it also comes off as overly aggressive. So yeah, I think the roles are important. Okay, so that's it. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the PR crisis management bit because I thought it was done really, really well and many Singaporeans were successfully sidetracked, right, uh, into discussing many issues that were not very relevant to the topic at hand, which is how culpable the WP leaders are. Yeah, are you one of them? Okay, so now we've come to part 3 and I'm going to draw you back to the issue at hand. At the end of the day, I guess the job of the COP is to determine how culpable the WP leaders are in the cover-up of this lie that went on for way too long. My personal belief is that the Worker Party leaders, meaning Pritam Singh, Sylvia Lim and Faisal Manak, since they knew about the lie on August 8th, they actually meant for Raisha Khan to not confess to the lie and just not talk about it in the hopes that it will not get exposed. And here are my reasons. Reason number one, motive. Okay, The three leaders, I feel, have motive to not let Raisha confess to the lie because I think that if she had confessed from the start, this would spell a lot of trouble for the WP. She already had a lot of controversy with her whole race baiting incident that happened like before she was fielded. And when this incident came about at the start, before she even joined the WP officially and was voted in, right? They actually stood behind her and supported her still and said that they trusted in her character, that she would, you know, be a good MP basically. And now if it comes out that she actually lied in parliament, then it would seem as if like their judgment's not very good, right? And there was red flags from the start, they still decided to go with this candidate. I think it wouldn't reflect very well on them. So I think that the party will actually stand to benefit. If this incident is just over, then it's over. There's no trouble for the WP ma, versus if they actively came out to confess, then there will be a lot of trouble for them. So I think that is their motive in, in sort of covering it up. I think that, you know, a lot of people think that Raisha is a it's a liar, it's an unrepentant liar, compulsive liar. She just lies and lies all the time. And because she has been proven to be a liar already, nobody believes her. However, I think about it, right? I don't feel like she has a motive to drag Workers' Party uh, through the mud. It doesn't benefit her in any way. Like her reputation is already in tatters, right? Nobody believes her anymore. She's no longer working as a politician and I highly doubt she ever would have a chance to ever be an MP or do any politics ever again in her life. Not that she needs to lah, okay lah, cause her family like super rich lah, okay? Not relevant, but anyway, I don't think she has the motive to sort of do this to them. Maybe some people would say that, you know, she wants to say that she was instructed not to confess to make herself seem less like a bad guy, maybe, I don't know. But I think that most people's impression of her is already down the drain because she's the one who just out of the blue decide to lie in parliament ma, like not only is it stupid, it is dishonest, you know, like so people already have a very bad impression of her to sort of salvage it by saying, oh, I didn't confess because people told me not to confess. It doesn't really help her reputation in any way. So why would she do that? I do sincerely believe that like, she has put in quite a lot of hard work uh, during her time with Workers' Party. I would say that she sincerely supports what the party believes in and her, you know, her 
her point of view, like her political point of view, unless they must have betrayed her trust in such a way that she's mother pissed off about it, then she's coming out to say all these things. Yep. So that's my conclusion on motive. Well, I think some people have also said like Pritam Singh is clearly a smart guy, right? From the start, he asked her to substantiate her claim, uh, the anecdote lah. So if he knew that there was going to be trouble, that her lie would be exposed one day, why would he ask her to cover it up? Because if he was found out helping her cover it up, right, then the consequences for him would be very dire, right? Well, my answer to that is that I think that at the start, he really did not expect the lie to be exposed. It's not until October 4th, like two months after the lie was said in Parliament, that uh, Minister Shamuga was really going down hard on Raisha, right? And at that point, I think Pritam was just like, oh fuck, mother Hong Kan already. Like, you know, he's just like, oh, I cannot already. He probably like, you know, October 4th, he probably was sitting there in his chair, like fucking peeing his pants and thinking like, Fuck lah, she have tell the bitch to fucking confess earlier, you know. So as time went by, right, I think it's harder and harder for the party leaders to take themselves out of this hole, right, that Raisha Khan has dug for them. Yeah, so their best hopes is that, you know, towards the end when people ask that, why you so long still never confess, right, they just, oh, you know, lao tian bo pi la, please lah, nobody ask her about the lie. Please, 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 don't. Yeah, but he did lah. Point number two, okay, so there's been a lot of back and forth about who said what, alright? And the only thing that both parties can agree that Pritam has said are the words, I will not judge you. So let's just imagine for a moment that Raisha is a liar and Pritam never said the words, take the information to the grave. And let's assume that he never said, I will not judge you if you keep to the, your narrative, meaning stick to the lie. Let's just say that he only said, I will not judge you because he conceded that he did say those words, right? Those are very, very vague words, right? Even if I discount Raisha Khan's testimony, I don't for a moment believe that somebody as smart as Pritam Singh would ever use such vague words to convey what he wants to say. If he wanted to be very direct and very sure that Raisha Khan got his meaning that she should confess her lie, I really don't think he would use words like that. I feel like it was said in an attempt to protect his own ass in case the lie ever gets exposed. What Pritam is arguing is that he meant I will not judge you if you tell the truth. And what Raisha took away from that is I will not judge you if you continue the lie. And during the hearings, uh, Pritam Singh said that he is very clear in his directive for Raisha to confess because he had told her that she should take responsibility and ownership of her actions and he also had told her that it is not right to lie in parliament. However, I don't, I still don't think it's very clear. Uh, to me, it seems like this, okay? Let me just give you sort of an analogy, a scenario that I will imagine in my head. Uh, let's say, for example, you plagiarize in an exam paper, right? That is a very, very important exam paper, like, okay? It means you pass or fail, okay? And it affects your future. And then you plagiarize already, right? Then you come home, you tell your mom, you say, hey, mommy, I, I plagiarized in this paper, like how I feel like I'm very scared about it. Then your mom says, oh my God, you fucking idiot. Like, why would you do something like that? That is clearly wrong, you shouldn't do that. And if you get caught, you, wow, wow, GG la. <laughs> then you ask your mom, right? Like, Ha, huh? like that, how ah? What should I do ah? Should I go and tell the lecturer or the, like the professor that I plagiarized like my thesis, right? And your mom goes... Up to you, I will not judge you. What will you take away from that? Like, it just... It just does not make sense that I would not judge you would be I would not judge you for telling the truth even though she has said that it's wrong. It doesn't mean that she wants you to confess because she also knows that you confessing means that your grade will be shit, you will get into trouble. Your future involves your mum, right? She wants you to have a good future as well. So in this case, the mum is like Pritam. Lah. If Raisha Khan confesses, then he will also get into hot soup, right? So it is only natural for any human to take I will not judge you as fine, you go and do the wrong thing, I will not judge you, right? But you will never tell someone if you do the right thing, I will not judge you. For what you judge somebody for doing the right thing? That doesn't make sense lah! Yeah, so that's my takeaway from that. Point number three. So on October 4th, during her parliamentary session, uh, when Raisha Khan was being grilled by Minister Shamugam, she actually texted Pritam Singh to ask, what should I do Pritam, right? You can see that Edwin Tong was kind of suggesting uh, to Pritam during his COP hearing that 
her texting him meant that she is still unclear on his directive, right? So she still doesn't know what to do. But according to Pritam Singh, he thinks that from the start, he has been very, very clear that he wants her to confess and that he already said like, you know, it's your call. As a member of parliament, you should know the right thing to do. Lah. So what he's saying is that I told you from the start, this is what you should do, but I leave it up to you to do it because I believe that you're a responsible human being, right? But in my point of view, I feel like she was definitely wasn't clear about what he wanted her to do because she still asked him for directions while she was on the stand. The text suggests to me that at best, you know, Pritam Singh is a very bad communicator and he wasn't clear uh, whether she should confess the lie or not. And at worst, it could be that he did tell her to stick to her lie and when she was being grilled, she was panicking because she was being grilled so hard, she did not know how to continue sticking to her lie so she texted him for help. Point number four, during their COP hearings, all three party leaders said that after they found out that Raisha told a lie, they all were waiting for her to tell her family about the sexual assault experience, right? However, if they actually wanted her to confess, they should have had a private meeting, sort of like between the three leaders, just without Raisha, just the three of them discuss and say, you know, okay, well, while we're waiting for her to tell her family, what are the next steps, right, that we should take? The fact that they never, they all three agreed that they didn't talk about this thing privately among themselves. This suggests to me that, like, they already decided to do nothing about it, which is sort of to let the lie slide lah. Maybe they felt like there's no need to discuss lah because we won't get caught lah, so okay lor. One of the questions that Edwin Tong asked the party leaders was, you said you were giving her time to tell her family about her sexual assault experience, but how long do you intend to give her? There must be some kind of timeline, right? If I intended for you to confess, I would say, okay, Raisha, I'll give you like a week to let your family know and to get mentally ready for this because there's going to be a lot of backlash on you. I think you should see a therapist, get yourself ready, blah, 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 all these things. Lah. So there was no timeline that was given to her. Nobody went to check on her to ask her, have you told your family members yet? But as it went on for months and months and you say that you are still giving her time to tell her family, then is 10 years okay? It's like 20 years okay? If there's no timeline given, I think any reasonable person would just be left to assume that you are okay with her never clarifying the lie. Point number six. On November 1st, right, Raisha finally did her confession. And on October 29th, which is a few days before her confession, the party leaders actually met up with her. They discussed how she should go about the confession and they help her draft her statement uh, you know to prepare for the confession so my question is if they had meant for her to confess any earlier then why didn't they do any of this preparation work like which is to help her confess right because during the actual confession you help her ma so if you had wanted her to confess earlier then you would have helped earlier make sense so I guess some people will say, well, they eventually did confess. It's just that they took a longer time. It doesn't mean that they meant for her to continue the lie. But if you are about to get caught, then you confess, right? Then you get no credits for honesty at all. Because you already know you're going to get caught, then you confess, ma. So you cannot use this to say, yeah, I confess what I miss. I wanted to confess from the start. I just took a longer time. Like, cannot lah. Because you're already about to get caught. Well, of course you confess, right? Like, how can you use that as evidence to show that you meant to confess in the first place? I don't think it proves anything. Point number seven. So many times during the hearings, we see that the three party leaders, um, they kept saying that they wanted to give Raisha like time and space because she is a victim of sexual assault. They sort of said, and I'm paraphrasing here, that they trusted Raisha to take responsibility and ownership of her own actions, but they didn't really want to push her uh, because they care a lot about her mental well-being and that was their first priority. So basically what they're saying is, you know, you go and confess to a lie, I already told you that you should confess to your lie, but you own time, own target lah because you're not feeling well, ma. But yet, several times during the hearings, right, we see Faisal Manap and Pritam Singh both uh, mention the nature of Raisha Khan's sexual assault. Sequence, as I mentioned to you, the sequence that she admitted, sorry, she confessed of her being uh, When she said she was, uh, she had been when she was 18. So she, she confessed that she's being mm. Okay, we are taken aback. Put ourselves between me and my daughter. Mm. Father, I was but I led to you. Again, I, I, I respect what you said earlier. But the, I used the word earlier because this was the word Miss Raisa Khan uh, used when she described herself. But if um, Chair and the committee I, would want me to use sexual assault, I'm happy to use that word. I'm quite happy that. if you can just use sexual assault. Okay, I will use sexual assault. 
and um, this is clearly an issue that she's very sensitive about and most importantly of all uh, it has not been known to the public before and they just basically sort of expose her even I feel that it's like a bit like it's like too much ah, really so on one hand we have this picture painted for us right by the party leaders that they are like you know caring uh, you know fatherly motherly almost and um, that they really they really care for Raisha basically but on the other hand we also have these party leaders who are going on the record in a very public video um, exposing her most like sensitive and like damaging secret to the whole world yeah so I, I, I just feel it's a little bit like contradicting also if you, if you say you care about her so much then why now you don't care anymore like you cannot really be caring and cruel at the same time right this behaviour right, is just not consistent so I'm forced to conclude right, that you saying that you care for her mental health therefore you didn't push her to confess her lie is just an excuse. Ah. So we've come to point number 8 and it's the last point here. One of the reasons why I believe that the party leaders wanted Raisha Khan to cover up the lie is because honestly if I were him, I think I might have done the same thing. I think that the three leaders were put in a very very difficult situation that is really not their fault, right? They did not instruct right, Shah Khan to lie in parliament or anything like that. Um, yeah, so they are kind of like stuck between a rock and a hard place. I do believe that the party leaders can be like honest people with integrity. They really disagreed with what Raisha Khan did. But maybe they just had to choose between the lesser of two evils. Yeah, either you help her cover up the lie which is wrong or you the other end of the thing is you confess and then you get your party into trouble lah. So yeah, maybe that was their choice law. While I really empathize with what the party leaders had to go through, right? I think we also need to remember that although, you know, many people think that it's very common that politicians lie, it is different when it's in a parliamentary setting and that's why it's so much more serious. In parliament, this is where we form our laws and important decisions about the country are being made. So you can't like just lie in parliament. La. It's, it's serious la, basically. While we cannot really be sure, okay, there's it's a lot of he says, she says, uh, we cannot be sure whether the WP party leaders directed Raisha Khan to continue with her lie or they directed her to confess the, the lie early. We don't know these two things for sure. One thing we can be sure of though is that there's no clear action on the three party leaders part when they had known about the lie months before it was actually confessed. So at best, I guess you can say that they let the matter slide for too long uh, which signifies a degree of ineptitude or neglect and at worst, they tried to actively cover up a lie that was said in parliament. Okay, so we've come to the end of this very long video and my conclusion is Stop voting for woke people. Hello, I told you guys from the start, right? This Raya Chaka cannot make it, right? And then everyone is just like, oh my god, she's a goddess, I love her, I'm gonna make a poster for her. She's the best, like, hashtags and everything. What did I say? What did I say from the start? Don't listen, right? This is what happened. Ah. Woke people are the worst, okay? Because they believe like their like, agenda is like the most important they need to save the world so they will do anything to achieve those agenda, okay? And while I don't agree with her ideology, I do sincerely feel very sorry for her that she had to suffer such a traumatic event, okay? It is very unfortunate. Lah. However, I do think right that it really doesn't justify her lying in parliament because she could really have made her point across without lying at all. Okay guys, so remember to do the whole liking, subscribing, hit the bell thing. And I guess I'll see you guys for the next video. Bye!